You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Almost Human After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Almost Human After Show. Show. <laughs> we were just reciting along with our wonderful announcer. Because yeah, yeah. why wouldn't we be? Sir Richard Wetmer. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sweet crystal method. Hey, everybody. Yeah. We're here doing the Almost Human After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. We're talking about Season 1, Episode 10. Perception. I am Matt Lieberman. Joining me as always, my fantastic panel of cronies, hey. the crew, <laughs> the team, as it were, the task force. I like that better than crony. Okay. Yeah, task right. force is nice. Got a massive I, task force I'm okay here. Task force, yeah. Tax, um, I said massive. We're not doing that yet. We're not Too taking soon. Dorian jokes uh, at the very time. Didn't even get um, a minute in. I know. Less than a minute. Uh, uh, Megan Salinas is here. <laughs> Hi, guys. Ryan Hooks. Hey, guys. What's up? Zach Wilson. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Roya Tahiri on the ones and twos. Engineering. Hello. Yes. Uh, so we finally got our last of our missing episodes, episode four, as uh, a lot of the folks on YouTube were kind to point out. Thank um, you. Thank you for that. It's or so hard to keep it straight. Thank you guys for, for being on top of that. Yes. Uh, last week's episode was actually episode 10, but this episode is episode <laughs> four, airing is episode 10. <laughs> you got it? Great. Um, it, and it you could tell pretty much immediately that this was an older episode. And in some ways, in some very problematic ways, I feel like this is the episode that's the reason why the show aired out of order at all. Um, because we get this uh, a massive information dump in what is otherwise like not the sharpest episode. And really, I feel like if it had played as episode four, maybe could have confused some people. What are you guys thinking? How do you feel about this episode? I see what you're saying. Um, it's it's not the it's not their best episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I like the whole Chrome. It's the greatest wor world establisher um, to, to learn about genetically engineered people as because that's something that's realistic. It's being worked on now. It's not terribly far away. So you can conceivably see that in 35 years, there yeah. would be kids that are that are this futuristic that are this designed. Um, but the stuff with Anna that we got was so like, whoa, revelations. Mm -hmm. and But it was also so tied to that storyline, you couldn't sep you could possibly separate. Right, and, and tied to the anger that Kenix has at the top of this series mm -hmm. that, you know, as of right now, he's kind of moved past a bit. You know, and this episode is him making that decision to lighten up and open up um, a little bit more. But at the same time, he knows that he's been listened to or all this time and then does nothing about it for <laughs> what six episodes in the original way that there's the season was structured so it, it there's no perfect place to put it because they don't deal with it i assume until the real episode 11. yeah honestly i think <clears throat> i think that <clears throat> excuse me i think the reveal at the end where, where you were just talking about where you find out that there's been this listening device yeah i think that was the reason why this this episode uh waited so long to air to make it seem like in syndicate's been watching this whole time oh i didn't I like oh, that yeah. that actually that makes make a lot it, of sense to make it seem like they're they're more of a threat than than we've perceived them to be because they've been sort of you know in the background while dealing with the case of the week right. this shows that they've been there the whole time i agree that all the character relations um it, it really doesn't fit this far into the yeah, series it, it really confusing. doesn't fit as episode 10 seeing dorian so soft-spoken and not seeing them banter back and forth and actually seeing kennex have a drug problem and everything like all of that doesn't really fit but having in syndicate um you know having this bombshell about in syndicate kind of dropped that does make in syndicate more of a threat but uh, Again, you're you're right. There's no really any good place to put this one. I feel yeah. like watching them now that I've seen all the episodes out of order and in order. 
if they would have put them in order, I wouldn't have felt bad about it. I would have been confused by the things that are happening. I wouldn't have felt like they stretched too far because it's a sci-fi show. I mean, it's yeah. the audience you're playing to is a sci-fi audience, and they will understand the concepts that you're throwing at them. <clears throat> and I think it sort of does create confusion because you're seeing these backward character developments. And to me, the way the episode ended, it almost felt like if this listening device was found and this series with Anna is closed, it could have been closed at this point. And he would have been fine moving forward and progressing as his character does in mm -hmm. the episodes we've seen. So it kind of confused me a little bit in that aspect that, yeah, that it, they had to move it so far. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, that's, that's the thing is it's, it's jarring. It's incredibly jarring this way. It, it would have been jarring probably less. So I think that the fans that they're trying to court absolutely would have been on board and able to handle it. But from a storytelling perspective, you have this massive revelation and this kind of information dump not just about Chromes, but about in Syndicate, his relationship with the captain, dealing with in internal affairs, who, you know, we have this long string of procedural episodes where none of this is mentioned again. So, you know, maybe they could have dropped it in, aired it like sixth or seventh, like right, right in the middle, just as their the relationship between mm. him and Dorian is really starting to sing and he lets go of his anger, and then their uh, relationship sings until it comes back up in another three or four. Regardless, I'm glad we got it all out now so that these next three episodes we can just run. We can just in sprint order. to 11, the finish. 12, 13. Exactly. We finally have no more random little insert episodes. Yeah, no more flashback town. I want to <laughs> get into the real deal. I want to see all the investigation. I want to see what's going on with John Larroquette's character. Um, but let's jump into this episode. So we've got this ongoing search for Anna. He is secretly in his home. He's just been putting up these holographic sticky notes all over his place. Awesome technology. Oh, great technology. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's pretty nifty. I kind of liked having all that. I felt like that was a weird place, though, because this episode to me felt like stuff from the earlier parts of the episode. When they're showing the cityscape scenes, it felt very Blade Runner. And I felt like they had moved away from that in the last few episodes yeah. and got more realistic. And this sort of like jumped back into that. I think this technology felt the same way, that it was like this is technology they used but then kind of got away from. And it was cool and all, but it just, again, felt weird to me. Well, even the shots, like establishing the sticky note, the virtual <laughs> sticky notes thing, is very world establishing like yeah. check out this cool technology that we came up yeah. with we're in the future, future. future. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need paper notes anymore i mean that moment where he's ridiculous paper. that moment where he throws it across he's like Whing! yeah <laughs> he like tosses it like a throwing star and it embeds itself against this real bulletin board awesome yeah which is great and like i want that technology in my own home i want to be able to fling notes at people and have them stick to them, <laughs> even though they're not real, and be the only person who can remove them. That to me is hysterical, <laughs> and anyone who passed out at my place would be subject to just a complete noting. Like whenever, <laughs> if it just like clings to that service, whenever they walk back into your apartment at a future date, all of a sudden it just reprojects it onto their forehead, and they're like, what? What does it say? What does it say? Oh yeah. No, I would make like fake paper wings and put them on my cat and then it would just be a cat dragon, a cat dragon all the time. Yeah, can you do origami? Can you do or uh, like That's this holographic what I know. origami? How how papery is this holographic paper? I think it's just sticky notes. We're getting too crazy. Fine. 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 In the future Ryan. anything is possible. I'm going to ruin your fun right now. No. There are two kinds of fans who listen to any podcast. <laughs> there are the ones who like Ryan want to hear all about the episode and have no time for fun. No time for fun here. <laughs> yes. Almost even only Andorian jokes. You are, That's it. You are their champion and I respect you because I could not be that champion. I like fun too much. <laughs> um, well, we can find a balance. We can know. find a balance. By talking about what's on the sticky note. True. Which is uh, Kenix's, yeah, it's like Kenix's timeline, his like beautiful mind, like string theories exactly. about why, where, why Anna was there, how she got into his life, and what her plan was. Well, he's taking these drugs and seeing the recoll recollectionist in order to open up these memory clusters and get little bits, little bites. He remembers we had this this clue as early as the first episode, I believe, mm -hmm. where she's like, "I got something for you." Um, something special for you. It's just a little thing. And he's like trying to remember what that is. And it's been staring him in the face this whole time. This Matryoshka doll, which uh, is embedded with like 
unseeable circuitry that's like an amazing listening device that isn't a device, but it is, and it's not made of wood. I love the future. It's too cool. <laughs> I, it, I love the tech stuff. Sorry. Well, no, when yeah, when great. when he kept <clears throat> having you know his memory flashes, I thought that the the device was going to like that what she gave him was going to be one of those big old chess pieces yeah, that's like sitting on. Pieces. Yeah, because he keeps <laughs> flashing back to the chess pieces. So do you think they'll come up again in the next episode? I have no idea. <laughs> I think was the Russian doll like next to the chess pieces that I we were looking at? I didn't see it next to them. I didn't either. It was so focused <clears throat> on the chess pieces, but it was I, the bookshelf. It was the same bookshelf yeah, that the yeah. Russian dolls yeah. were on. But because the chess pieces were right there and were the biggest object, I was yeah. like, oh, it's got to be something to do with those chess pieces. And I kept waiting for that to come up for the rest of the episode. Uh, and MacGuffin. then it had nothing to do <laughs> with the chess pieces. I know. I'm like, part of me wants them to be explosives and made out of whatever the future of C4 is, Dare. I say C5. Um, or even C6. Whoa, now we're getting dangerous. C4.0? We're, we're only 35 <laughs> years in the future, C4. Ryan. C4.5? Oh, I'm the one that's getting crazy now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. C, C4X? No, that's not what it is. Um, but, it, I mean, it, uh, it would feel like a too much, too ridiculous if it was another listening device, but it could be another device of some kind. Like, now he could go on, like, a major sweep, like, I got to get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. And then he finds something in the chess pieces. Yeah. Well, of course, the moment that he lets his anger go, he discovers that he's been spied on all this time, um, which, again, because of the placement of this episode, makes it really unsettling because he's handled all these cases in this, you know, new timeline of the show, he's handled all these cases and in Syndicate's been listening in on him this whole time. So they can always be one step ahead of him. And that's what it felt weird to me though, again, because in the end of the episode previously, he deleted the message from her and like, she's pretty much gone from his life. Yeah. But now all of a sudden he's trying to have memory recall about her and finds this information, you know, like it's just weird that he now has this infatuation with trying to find the information again, that right. he felt like he moved past already. Yeah, it felt very disjointed. Again, I, I think you're right. I think it would have been better to, if you're going to move it around at all, probably six or seven yeah, would have earlier. been a better place. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, for we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the season. Yay! <laughs> We can just move forward. We can move on like yeah. Kenix is moving on. Yeah. And let's move on. Let's move <laughs> on. Moving right along. Yes. So uh, a rare Almost Human episode that opens with a teaser before the, the opening sequence uh, as these two girls are on drugs and they're seeing the truth of the universe. They're mainlining the truth of the universe for anyone who's watching True Detective. That was um, an awesome vis like visual yeah. effects I, sequence. That was a great scene. Yeah. Yes, especially the girl like orchestrating at the same time. That was yeah, like, well, like the way it cut back and forth between yeah. the two. I mean, seeing like the idea that you could just like see the math, like the formulas that it would take to like measure circumference and all that, and then like see the notes that are pulling like... I just it was it looked really cool. <laughs> the There's a Simpsons quote. Or... I can see the music. It's <laughs> kind of what I was thinking well, a little even bit. Even before we found out that it was drugs, I for a second I was like, is this how chromes see the world? That's They're what so I thought smart all the time. that they just see the world like that all the time. Then these girls die, um, and it's this designer drug, so perfectly designed uh, that it's just for them. It has their DNA imprinted. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we move into a world where we have these 3D printers and we can uh, manufacture anything, of course, someday it's going to be that simple to produce medication mm -hmm. and chemical compounds in the safety and comfort of your own home. They call it a chem printer. Chem printer. Yeah. Convenient. Very simple. Very convenient. Making crazy pills that let people uh, unlock their potential if they have all the flaws removed from them from birth. Um, so I want to talk. I want to talk about the details of this plot. Then we're going to talk iTunes, and then I want to talk about the implications of having chromes, having these genetically altered people in our society. It seems like in the highest strata mm -hmm. of this society, all people uh, make their kids as powerful and as strong and as beautiful and as smart as possible. Yep. When you have the money, you can take care of these kinds of things. So we've got this Mendel school that's like, it's like a Montessori school or a magnet school. It's where all the smart kids go. All the smart genetically altered kids go to the Mendel school and then they go on to become future heads of state and uh, diplomats and scientists and certainly not detectives. Uh, or at least that's usually how it happens. It's mostly chromes with a few select 
hum, uh, regular humans. I was going to say humans as if they're a different species. Uh, <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's really interesting yeah. part about it. They're they're almost human. They yeah. are a different. They're in a sense a different oh, species. Oh, he went yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Oh, my God. I. Yeah, I'm name dropping. <laughs> uh, oh, name dropping. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but they are they're like they are genetically different, and it's really that question of like it's the same question you see in like stuff like X Men or any any of those types of things. When you're altering a human's DNA, at what point are they no longer human? It's a good question. I I, I mean I would say they're still human. They're the best of us, but are they a different species? That you know that's for the lawmakers to decide. Um, I would like to think that we're all one species, even if some are more evolved than others. That's what Professor X would say. That's what, <laughs> exactly. I think so. Yeah. By the way, this kind of felt like an evil, like Xavier Institute, didn't it? A little yeah. bit. Yeah. The yeah. white walls and the flames and. Oh yeah. Well, that was a memorial. I know. It's. Still it's not creepy. like they just have flames everywhere. <laughs> That's danger. That's too dangerous for a school. You if can't Pyro's run there, a school do. that way. Well, <laughs> we're, we're not at that stage. We don't have mutants here. Oh, okay? Okay. Although a couple evil looking students, yeah, for sure. Who like didn't get explored, really. <laughs> yeah. One of them um, looked like a mini version of Moriarty. <laughs> yeah. Well, like one and, of them looked kind of like Dane DeHaan from from uh, from Chronicle. He was like the evil kid in Chronicle. Yeah. And now he's Harry Osborn in, <laughs> in Amazing Spider-Man 2. The um, hacker? Yeah. I, the hacker looked like he had been punched in the face, but not enough times. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like they were just kind of like these rich, uber smart jerks that are going to get away with everything their whole lives. They were like, they were basically little Winklevoss twins. They're the skulls. Yeah. yeah. yeah Winklevoss, you wouldn't understand, Matt. You wouldn't understand. And then when the kid <laughs> mouths it through the glass, because he so knows what's going on, he doesn't even need to hear it. He's just... <laughs> that was me mouthing it. What did what did he say again? I he said remember. you wouldn't understand. Mm. He said you wouldn't understand, which is just so douchey. It's like somebody who's yeah. like you know they have like a new trend like when planking happened and someone's like <laughs> why do you do that? It's like, you wouldn't understand. It's like yeah, and they said it so smug too, mm-hmm. like with a smile on their face. Like the the other kid that um, Kenix and Dory in question, you know, when he Marshall. was being earnest. Oh, well, no, um, I meant Julian. Julian, yes. He was being completely earnest when he said it. These guys said it ironically, like, you guys are too stupid I know, to I totally had them pegged as murderers, and then we didn't come back to them. I'm wondering if, for whatever reason... Kenny said, too, he's like, I want it to be these guys, even if it's wrong. Yeah. Well, no, it was them. They were the ones yeah. that they were the ones that were paid um, to hack the printer, right. but it wasn't their, I suppose, it wasn't their main motivation. Their right. main motivation was just Because clearly you know, they need more money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when you have that much potential and you have unlimited resources or sim- seemingly so, you know, there, it was like that whole affluenza case that everyone was talking about, you know, a couple months back Ooh. where that, that kid got off because he was too rich to realize that his actions have consequences and uh, people die. Don't, don't get me started on that. Yeah. <laughs> but my, my point is when you have that and then you also are born more gifted than the average person you have been uh, you've been overclocked like a computer and you know this from birth that you are effectively genetically perfect it's going to warp your mind and that's what makes me so fascinated by detective stall in why she uh, she has so much empathy and so much humanity you know that she rejected this her sort of her people she rejected this kind of chrome path and instead is trying to help normal people I was actually, this is the only time I've watched an episode and kind of been a little disappointed because I was really banking on this being a stall character development episode. Yeah, I mean, yes. And it mm-hmm. focused way more on, on Kenix and, uh, you know, his memories of Anna. And there's nothing wrong with that. But because I had been so banking on this being a stall oriented episode, when we got virtually nothing on stall right, i was, was just kind of like well i still have so many questions why why uh, become a detective we got we got <clears throat> we got hints essentially so i'm wondering if there's a bigger mystery if that's sort of what they're setting up they're setting up something more sinister or more intense than they could deal with you're in this saying episode? they have grander ambitions yes like maybe her parents were not good people you know and it was like drug money or cartel money or you know, Ooh. she was or, maybe maybe she was bred for a dark purpose. Maybe she's the mole. 
Like that's that's a possibility. That Maybe a possibility. she's this mastermind in in syndicate, and she's like, you know, what's a great way to go about, you know, manipulating the police and keeping an eye on what they're doing? Why don't I just become a detective? Hmm. It's entirely possible. I mean, it's like it's suspicious because not a lot because no other crumbs seem to be doing something like it. But at the same time, it's not obtrusively suspicious like if you if you didn't know if you weren't around chromes all the time you wouldn't know that she was one she doesn't you know do anything necessarily suspicious well she's the, good at her job they they talk about that so you eventually can tell the difference yeah, yeah when you're comments yeah and i know we remember uh i think it was technically the second episode it was a few weeks ago that it aired um detective d-bag was like he made a, a an off like an offhand comment about her being like too perfect or right. genetically engineered. And then it gets punched. Yeah. <laughs> we all love that. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah. Um, no punches for Detective Paul this week. He, he was didn't, very quiet. He didn't, yeah, he didn't really? show up at all. He only popped in for like a shot. Yeah. Well, I feel like they're figuring out how best to get us to come around and like him. He's the guy who we are supposed to dislike at first, and then eventually he becomes one of the good guys. He's on his way, but he's done. he hasn't done that much to like make us love him. I think it has to be a week where Dorian's away and Kenix has to have a new partner. I mean, but that's the thing, right? Because this show so very firmly is focused on the partnership of Kenix and Dorian, it's very hard to get satisfying character moments for anyone else on the show. Mm -hmm. Maldonado got it. She got it in the in the episode Blood Brothers with the trial. Um, and even Stahl got a nice bit there. But we haven't really seen Detective Stahl or Detective Paul get a nice juicy storyline for an episode yeah and i think it were it's something they're setting up for stall not for not for paul right i think he's just he's the, the he's just there to cop. be just, to be yeah. gruff and to to be unpleasant until eventually he comes around Some, you know two cop. days before yeah. retirement <laughs> sometime in like season two fingers crossed like we'll get a detective paul episode where we actually find out some more about his backstory i'd be a big fan of that um, okay, we're going to come back to this. I just want to talk really quickly about iTunes and YouTube and thank all the folks who are uh, getting at us on the internet. We really appreciate it. You know, we do this show. We do this show, uh, you know, because we love talking about Almost Human. After Buzz TV, we put out 60 plus hours of content a week. It's a crazy amount of content. And how much does that content cost? It costs you nothing because we release it for free. It's a hell of a bargain, heck of a deal. And you can watch it or listen to it on any of your devices. Wow, what a savings. Yep. Now, what could one do to help support this endeavor? I'll tell you, it doesn't take any money. It just takes a little bit of your time. Go to the iTunes, slap us with a review, give us a comment. I think we're hovering around like 40 right now. I'd love oh. to cross 50 by next week. And I think we can do it. I think we can mobilize. That five-star rating. Yeah, mobilize the people, get the numbers up. Because I'll tell you, this is the only way that we get ranked against other shows on After Buzz TV and other shows in general. We want people to recognize that Almost Human is a great show. It deserves a second season. I know that this plays a very, very small part in that, but networks do pay attention to After Buzz TV, mm -hmm. to what we do. Uh, Fox has been a sponsor on our network. They're aware of it. The better that this show can do on After Buzz TV. It's in the TV, top 10 right now. Yeah, it's in the top 10 right now. If it got up to number one before the finale in its first season, that's something. It's something that people yeah. take notice of, and we have the power to affect the future of this show. That's all I'm going to say about it. We got some wonderful shout outs to people. I'm, uh, I'm going to shake things up. I'm also going to give out some of the great names mm -hmm. of the people who commented mm -hmm. on YouTube. Uh, Joseph Ortiz, also a fan of the 10th Kingdom. What up, Joseph Ortiz? <laughs> um, CJ Davey, uh, reaching out to us. Thank you. Violet Eyed 7, December. Um, a lot of folks giving us a lot of great information. You know, we can't always get everything right. We try our best. We do. We watch this show uh, and then immediately come in and talk about it. You know, so there's not a ton, a ton of time to communicate. There's not a ton of time to go over it for details. So we appreciate people holding us to task. It's important. We don't want to be giving out wrong information. Marielle Jones, uh, Dana Smooth. Thank you, Dana Smooth, for your comment. Uh, Best comment ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dana Smooth uh, no, is, you, is, is upset that, that I'm, I'm a loud person. This I is Matt's voice. I, I, I should be here all the time. If I was here all the time, then I feel like I would put you to sleep. 
No, I, I, I wasn't going to reference the comment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's out there now. The um, but, you know, I, I understand that I have a certain style of speaking and, 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 mod and modulating and being a host that doesn't work for everybody. And I, I enjoy when Matt shouts. He loves to shout about everything from monkeys <laughs> right. to, to door robots. It's the way that I show my enthusiasm. It's the way that I show my love. I apologize if it doesn't make this the best listening experience for people. I'm taking that note in stride and trying to even out my performance a bit because <laughs> frankly, I want everyone to love this podcast and I don't want to lose a single almost human fan because I can't shut up. So working on it. So thank you. Never for that. stop talking. Man. Buckle it up. Bu buckle it eyes. And Ever. we have. Uh, we have. Do we have any iTunes comments? I know we have one or two. Do Roya. I, do you want the names? Or yeah, you... I want. I want the names in the comments. All right. Well, I'm gonna butcher the names, so I apologize, guys. It's Alacarande Cali. I dig it. How big is Dorian's dong? <laughs> yeah. Boom. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm tune into the video podcast. Yeah. It's about. This it's about big. yay big. No, here's here's how you figure out the the actual metric length of a Dorian. Uh, we get an equation now. <laughs> we get an equation. I want you to take the length of the Golden Gate Bridge, and then I want you to think about combine the ages of your two parents. Divide the length of the Golden Gate Bridge by the ages of your two parents combined, and then subtract the amount of times that you've sworn in your life, and the remaining number is the length in metric meters, actual meters, not centimeters, of a Dorian. Oh, God. It is that long, is that big, it can't fit inside of a building or a car. <laughs> That's why this is a television show and not real life. Where did that come from? <laughs> it came off the top of the dome. That's what's called <laughs> improv. Uh, yeah. And on that note. On that note, back into the, into the story of the week. It's so big it <laughs> makes the car crash. It's true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, when we when the car crashed and that massive pole was in Dorian's face, I thought about <laughs> how other people must feel when they're within a 500 yard radius of Dorian. <laughs> um, especially when it took part of his ear off. Hilarious. <laughs> that was the only time we saw a good banter between them this week. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, could you speak up? Yeah, I'm sorry. So the when they're on the porch and he's got the earpiece on, he's like, I'm sorry, what? Could, I couldn't hear you. Yeah. I'm so happy. It doesn't look so bad. I'm happy that Dorian can get pissed about stuff. Like the MXs yeah. don't get pissed. It's it's like it's not the most vital human emotion, but it to me, when you get angry about something, it's when you kind of lose control. Like, uh, and seeing a machine not being able to hold it together and needing to lash out is one of the most interesting things about the DRNs to me, is that they're made to feel like we feel. And I would be pissed if someone took off part of my ear, even if it could be reattached <laughs> easily. Well, that, and Dorian has so much empathy and is so understanding, you know, he's so kind towards other people that it's just hilarious to see him go, Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you took my ear off. That's yeah. not cool, dude. He offered to drive. You know, he saw Kenix was on drugs and was like, hey, man, you're on drugs. Can I drive <laughs> so that we don't die? <laughs> so, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there a comment earlier in the season about Dorian driving? Uh, he said, I never get to drive. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and this is the one time else. in the Cause season. Because he got to that drive in this episode. Drive. So, I wonder if there was something they maybe cut out that happened while he was driving that made When did them... he drive in this episode? He gave him the keys after they left the house. Oh. After, after they... the Julian... crash. Yeah. Okay. After like, the oops. crash, after they left Julian's house, he drove. But I wonder if there's something that happened maybe that they cut out in a scene they taped that made them never want Dorian to drive again. I don't think so. No, I think it's just a control thing. Like, Kenix likes his car. He likes feeling like he's in likes control. Likes coffee. He's... Seven <laughs> Dorian's <laughs> so, Okay. Dorian is a unit of measurement. Not temperature. Not temperature. Not okay. temperature. Come on, Ryan. Ah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Dory agrees. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. We're not going to do this. Fine. Um, Degrees Dorian. Yeah. Well, I mean, the man is attractive. So if you were to calculate his hotness oh as, a, as a mem number of units, we're not going to do this. We only have it's so much time. Hot. It's, it's too true. hot. Fine. Fine. Fine, everyone. Okay, so we've been talking about Chrome, so we've been talking about Stahl. I liked how how uh, complex this plot was and that it wound up going back to this normal girl's mother um, and the, the amount of pressure that she didn't even realize she was mm -hmm. putting on her daughter, asking her to compete against these genetically altered ubermenches, you know? So it's interesting. When you live in a world where the 
top 1% of households are most likely all genetically altering their children to be the best of the best and therefore maintain their dominance over the lower classes. You see this class divide pushed even further by rewriting humanity on their own terms and not on ours. And I, it, it, it really, really blew me away and really inspired me that they took the story in that direction where you know, when you're trying to move between these classes, you're going to have these this crazy amount of pressure because you are trying, you're working against, the odds are not with you. It's like the machine is cheating. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're li literally, addiction is programmed out yeah. of the chromes. Yeah. So that one thing that like trips up so many people like already today in the lower classes is suddenly like and not even higher a classes. question. Yeah, but not, it's not even an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I... Uh, maybe talking out of school but i you know when i was growing up i had a cousin named jeffrey cousin jeffrey who uh thank you um cousin jeffrey who got addicted to drugs and was following fish around on tour wound up on the street and the family disowned him he cleans up and then like 10 years later suddenly everyone no one talks about the fact that he was disowned for for that amount of time but like you have somebody who's a member of a good family Normally, you know, maybe addiction would be a problem and then they don't have a clear shot at the title. All of these people are born predators. They're born contenders. They're, they have a much better shot at accomplishing anything significant. They've been given this massive head start. And I just, I'm kind of blown away by a world where you have to compete with that. And then having someone throw away, essentially, that potential and become a cop when she could have been anything she wanted in the entire world makes her fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's you're deciding this is what uh, it's what she wants to do, mm -hmm. and she didn't want the advantage. She she doesn't want the advantages that being a Chrome necessarily gives her. Not that she doesn't like being smart and yeah. being and Chrome is, is short well, short for chromosome, right? That's the, I'm getting that right. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but that's <laughs> absolutely what it must be. It okay, must be cool. I just thought Chrome because shiny. Well, and, it, you know, it's interesting, too. I think there's probably a lot to be said about this lifestyle. And it could be that she's thrown that away because she doesn't like this lifestyle of looking down at other people. Because mm -hmm. these Chromes, um, they, not all of them, I'm sure, but it looks like a good majority of them have a huge ego and huge superiority complex. And they look down at the normies, <laughs> you know, of the world. And... In addition to how, you know, much this gets us intrigued about Detective Stahl, it also says a lot about the macro sort of um, aspects of this world. Like, how has this affected politics? How has this affected um, business leaders and right. everything like that? And so it's very interesting to think about how the people who are running the world, you know, like you said, are, are, make, are further separating themselves from everybody else. So are you suggesting then that these chromes are potentially the reason the world is as it is in the show maybe they're the reason we have the wall now who knows i don't know it, it seems like the chrome is a little bit of a newer thing it you know detective stall is still kind is still pretty young but it, it says a lot about the future of this world and the direction that it's going mm -hmm. it, absolutely and we don't know how many economic strata there are because there are still normal people who live on the right side of the wall um, we don't know why it's been erected, but yeah, how many of the last, you know, few presidents of the of the United States in this future are all chromes? You know, are they allowed to run for public office? I feel like once you have the the odds stacked against you in such a massive, massive fashion, you're going to get some crazy unrest. And maybe the wall came up because of a, a war or a rebellion or some kind of revolution that came about when this technology was made legal. I mean, maybe I'm inflating its importance in the society, but it's a massive, massive, massive difference between our society and theirs. And I would say it's a far more drastic difference than the creation of androids because we're altering our own DNA and calling them human versus the androids that we deny their humanity. Yeah, which if you read any science fiction book, will tell you don't alter DNA. You don't know what little... Thing you're gonna switch you're gonna flick by accident yep. and all of a sudden we're extinct in a thousand years <laughs> play god pay the price yes Felix on sci-fi <laughs> uh, and here at after buzz yeah it's a great show um okay anyone else have any thoughts feelings i, I want to pose a question to the room i don't know if we have time but i feel like we do we do um 
I want to know if you had the choice, would you want to be genetically altered? And if you had the choice when you have kids, would you do it or would you want them to grow up as the Lord on high if there is one intended? Are we talking genetically altered so that you're like the chromes and that you're so super you're like smart? Chromes, or super are we smart? talking like vigors and no. strengths from a Bioshock? Because no. I would totally buy into that. I would totally buy into that too. <laughs> but I want to not... shoot lightning from my hands. I want to have claws. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'm talking about just in this context. Just in this context. I I don't think I would like to think I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I would like to I kind of would like to think I'd look at that like I would plastic surgery in that okay, that's something for some people or you know this is a, a something that is a potential to help a lot of people yeah. for certain things, but it's not for me. That's no, what I would like to think. I got a question though. We need to elaborate more. Are we taking how we are now and then altering it to Chrome level with the empathy, compassion, and or knowledge we already have, or are we going back being reborn as a Chrome into a society? You could go back, go back in time and have your parents make you a Chrome. Uh, no, then they wouldn't be as smart as me anyway. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I'm more, I'm actually more interested in the debate of like, would you do this to your children? Right, because you you yes. want the best for them. You want them to have the best shot at succeeding. Yeah. I I have to say I wouldn't. It, with the caveat, if it was correcting a disease, or if like if my family had a history of addiction mm -hmm. or anything like that, like a history of extreme breast cancer, or something like that, that could that needed to be corrected because it shortens their lives so significantly, that has to all affect my decision. The personality differences, I feel like it challenge it like takes away a part of what we are as humans. Like those challenges are what makes us us. Yeah. And not robots. We learn from our mistakes. And if you you preclude uh, if you make it so that you can't make mistakes, if you're too smart to make mistakes, mm -hmm. you'll never learn anything and you become those smug jerks in the principal's office. And that's even the argument that Julian made in this episode too, where he's like, Do you think that I was you know, you didn't. Why, I didn't come forward because I already knew all this. Yeah, and you wouldn't believe me anyway. And he's yeah. like, I'm too smart for that. And you know that he loved her for her flaws, and her flaws were the most beautiful thing about her. Oh, yeah. that was so sweet. Almost human. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's time for predictions. No, it's not. It isn't. We've got news and gossip. I thought it was. Do we have news now, and gossip? Well, your we... after buzz TV. Do we? <sighs> you can you can throw it in now. Ah. <laughs> Um, there just it so, is. Uh, so it better be good. No, yeah, no, it's, it's, really no, good it's for that's why I was like, eh. <laughs> I, I really just wanted to talk about ratings real quick. Please. Um, this episode saw a 16% overall drop in pr in base ratings. Uh, lost a million viewers. Is that because this of the Olympics? Week. Probably doesn't help. Um, but it's still still a concern. They only it's the winter almost human only got like a one a one five <laughs> in the key demo. And that's not great not news. Great. How many million some, is that? that we, one five. What does that equate to? Um, it's about it's about one and a half million. It's not in that exact, demo, but we had it was demo. about five point three overall. Yeah, which is um, which is not, not bad, bad, but not enough to secure almost human a spot next season. And I, I read some quotes today um, from the president of Fox like a month ago saying it's going to be an, like in, an interesting discussion. Yeah. About Do we get that information renewal. around May? Is that usually when they make those announcements? Um, um, it could come at it, any it time. It could come at really. any time. They might hold it for a while. I feel like a show like this, they probably have a little bit of time because it's a mid-season show. Or, well, no, it's not a mid-season show this season, but if they kept it, I feel like they'd keep it as a mid-season show or uh, to put on immediately after Sleepy Hollow next fall. I think it's going to come down to two things. It's going to come down to how much can they chip away from the budget, how much can they actually chip away, and if they can partner with a streaming service to partially fund the show in exchange for exclusive rights, you look at what CBS did with Under the Dome last summer, and by partnering with Amazon Prime, uh, the day after the show aired, it would be up on Amazon Prime, and Amazon Prime then kicked in two, $250,000 per episode to the budget in exchange for those exclusive rights. They can make this show work without cutting too much of the budget if they can score those kinds of streaming Has deals. Sleepy Hollow been guaranteed for second season? Sleepy Hollow yeah. is definitely coming. They back. were back early. They the got run. that news after their second episode. Okay. Um, so I have high hopes that the show will return. I think, you know, it's very creatively strong. I think it comes down to how well is it doing overseas? Can we secure more funding from a streaming platform like mm -hmm. Amazon? 
Okay. I mean, it's the type of show that has rat like those kind of sci-fi rabid fans. They're yeah. out there. They just have to get watching on the Mobilize, Nielsen boxes. people. Get yep. on the Tumblr. Tell them. Tell them what to do on to watch Twitter. it. On the Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the Tumblr word world. I've heard good, heard good things, but I've also I'm, I'm intimidated. Post it on Pinterest or something. Yeah, <laughs> make make a Dorian board. Make it as big as a Dorian. You know what we should make a Tumblr about? <laughs> Our predictions. Ooh, it's nice. Oh. I liked it. It was a good segue. Predictions. All right. So what are we thinking, folks? Did you guys see the trailer? Or uh, did you watch yeah. I did. I watched it on Hulu. I did not see the trailer. I I watched it and. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a prediction right now and say I called it. I called it weeks ago. I kept, I've been saying up until this point that I've been afraid that someone's just gonna flip a switch and that the DRNs are gonna go, Dorian included, are gonna go crazy. And this looks like it's that episode. Yeah, it's about yeah. Hi- hacking synthetics is what the whole episode is about. Sick. Yeah. So every every synthetic is at risk. Every MX, every DRN could be all of a sudden like flicked over. And just so kill this you. could be the return of John Larroquette. Rad, love him. Could be. I uh, also this could be also be uh, Detective D-Bag's moment to shine because if uh, Dorian's out of the picture, yeah, they got to go no robots because it's a, the the tagline was trust no robot. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> bum, 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 and, bum, and bum. as a fan of iRobot, Zach, you're probably squealing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a fan of that one too. Well, but this is human interference. It's not artificial intelligence Fine. taking Developing. on a new. Yeah, and the, the security company is called Centurion Security, <laughs> which I heard and I was like, Rory, what? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> poor Rory. Um, oh, the last centurion. Anyway, um, yeah, I I'm excited. If the if all the if all the synthetics are going nuts next week, it's going to be chaos. It may carry over. I mean, I dare not hope for a three part finale, um, <laughs> but it would be pretty pretty cool if they did. This looks a little bit more procedural Fine. than that, but I think it could lead into a two part yeah. finale. A two part yeah. finale. I'm still my biggest prediction. I'm going to reiterate it now about the wall. Yeah, I am still saying escape uh, from New York style prison city. Got it. That's pretty cool. I'd like, be down in, for that. In a world where they have this many prisoners that have to be taken in for so many unlike classifiable crimes, they have to put them somewhere. Prisons are growing and growing and growing in the country right now. Yeah, and eventually they're just like, well, let's just wall them up then and put them over there. Then why haven't we seen more? absolute fear from people when they're being arrested yeah i still feel like district 13 underground society <laughs> mockingjay style <laughs> we'll we'll see about that i guess very very curious um well and we still have an army of uh of uh, xrns of yeah. drns out DRN there that squared. are gonna get converted Ooh. yeah yep here's my question about that drns so like the super processor and everything they have a certain level of empathy, right? Because they're similar to Dorian. And I know the XRN did too, but how much does that affect it? Could the army like turn on John Arquette? They could, but if you recall during the last week's episode, the synthetic soul takes on whatever the creator is feeling at the time. And that's why they were, it was evil. That's why the XRN killed people is because he was filled with so much rage. That rage has not gone away. Well, and this will be very interesting too. Maybe the reason um, that that the synthetics um, that the synthetics are in danger this week is because it's a trial run for you know implementing this army, and they're like, okay, now if this works, if all of the DRNs in that are active in the city are ours to control, (laughs) then we know our plan is a go, and that'll be very interesting to see how um, this you know this hacking. And the synthetic soul are going to be at odds. And poor Dorian, I, I'm sitting here getting feels just thinking about it right now. Going, oh, poor Dorian, he's going to be like, John, run! <laughs> but at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have a question uh, on the, like the synthetic soul because maybe just a clarification. Like when you're saying that it's about how he feels at the time, is that when he makes the synthetic soul honestly, originally, or when he installs it? Is like when he when you know, the DRN comes to life, and he if he's mad, then that DRN's gonna be mad forever. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's hard science. I'm just I'm saying what he said last week. His not necessarily explanation, but his theory as to why it turned out so differently. Let's explain the XRN why she was evil. Right. I mean, you wake up for the first time. You you you're booted up, and you have a soul, and you're experiencing life after nothingness whatever you feel in that first environment the same way a baby absorbs uh its environment 
I feel like uh, uh, an android would soak it in the first time that they're awake. See, I thought it was more that was kind of almost like BS. Like his because he I I imagine that he had somehow programmed the XRN bore so it could have been intentional. That's yeah. very possible because he was just lying through his teeth right, he's for a, a crazy good portion person. of the episode. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think we'll find out coming up in the next three episodes. I can't wait to see him. We'll find out. All right, uh, I think that's going to be all for us this week. I think um, so. I uh, want to thank you all at home for watching Thanks, or listening guys. out there. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. Woo. Megan Salinas, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I'm also on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast, which will be back in March, and uh, the Sherlock podcast. Yes, which is coming back. We did season three, and now we're doing seasons one and two because we were having so much fun, we just didn't want it to stop. Woohoo! All right, you can follow me at RyanHooks92 on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Facebook, on the uh, <laughs> Yahoo. Also on the Black Sales podcast, new to AfterBuzz here. And Revolution coming back on the 26th. And also Intelligence. L- lovely. lovely. On CBS. Yes. Yes. Cool. Mr. Wilson. I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me at that Zach Wilson on Twitter. And also here at AfterBuzz on Grim Archer and Helix with Matt Lieberman over here. Yes. Hey, that Matt and Lieberman. It's a great show. If you haven't seen Helix, it got crazy good this week. I highly, highly recommend it. It's crazy it. good. We're having some stars of the show yeah. in soon. Yeah, they're paying attention to the show, which is a lot of fun. Done. They're coming in, uh, which is great. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman, M A T T L I E B E R M A N. And you can find me on a couple of those shows that were just mentioned. Soon you can count. also find me on Cougar Town and Justified Throw and Banshee. Uh, and that's actually it. That's actually it. There aren't that many more. Well, because Almost Human and uh, yeah, throw Shield dark. and we're good. Sherlock. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> thank you from all of us here at After Buzz TV. We will see you. Is the next episode next week? Yes. Yeah. Thank goodness. We'll see you next week. See good you night. next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.